All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be building a basic HTTP server with Go. So I am in a new directory called basic HTTP server. I have my main.go file, my Go module, which I can create with Go mod in it. And to set things up, I'm just going to name my package. We'll just call it main. We'll set up our imports with net slash HTTP. We'll need a few more. And we'll set up the main function. So as you can see, Go has a built-in package for handling HTTP requests. HTTP is the protocol of the internet, basically. It's the, probably the most used protocol. Um, it just is what we use to serve web pages. Um, so if you want to read more about this package, you can head over to package.go.dev. And you need to do net slash HTTP because there's a whole net package itself, which deals with lower level stuff. And then, you know, HTTP is a separate package, basically. But anyway, we're going to be building an HTTP server. So basically, we're going to work with two, two methods. We're going to do one called listen and serve. And then we're going to register our handle function. Um, so... We'll create our first handle function like so. We will just call this the root. Actually, we'll call this index since the home page of a website is referred to as index. And this method is going to take two parameters. The first, we're just gonna call W, and it's gonna be of type HTTP, uh, HTTP dot response writer. Yep, so we have HTTP uh, response writer, and we'll have R, which is going to be a request, and it's going to be point to an HTTP dot request object, and then the logic for a function can come in here. So we're just going to go IO dot write string. It's going to be to our HTTP response writer, and we're going to do hello world as usual. And then we need to register our function like so. So we can do HTTP dot handle func. And this takes two arguments, the route that we want to our function to be called at, and then the actual function itself. So I'll call index. Um, you see here in this example, it's called foo handler. You can also define functions like this. Uh, you can define an anonymous handler function, like so. You can do HTTP dot handle func. We'll call this foo. We'll do an anonymous function, so func. And it just takes the arguments, w http dot response writer r to point to the HTTP dot request. And we're actually, before I forget, we're going to get an error right now because we're not accessing this request object. So we can turn that to an underscore. And this will just do IO dot write string W comma hello comma world exclamation point. So what does this handle functioner do? Well, it registers, it's basically it says when this route is called, when we click this route on our server, or when we go to the, the slash directory on the web server, we want this index function to be called. Likewise, if we go to the foo page, we want this anonymous function to be called. I also need to import the IO function. Now the last step we need to do is we need to actually start our server. So I'll do format dot println starting basic HTTP server and we can do HTTP dot listen and serve the first argument is going to be where we want to serve our our um, our web pages from and in this case it's going to be localhost so I'm just going to do a colon 3000, so localhost port 3000. And the next argument we're going to refer to nil, 
And we're not going to worry about this argument right now, but just a brief explanation. There's basically something called middleware, which is just the underlying, um, I want to say server, but the underlying process that handles each of our web requests. And the default middleware in Go is Mux, but there are other middlewares that you can use. Um, but because we place nil, we're just falling back on the default Mux uh router so I can start this by going to my directory go run main.go um, and I, while I was changing Oops, I need to import format. So before I put braces on this function, I don't need to put those. As you can see in the documentation, we can, for some reason, leave the parentheses off of our, of our method call right there. And I actually, what they did here, there was they did log.fatal ln and they wrap that in our HTTP listen and serve function. So we'll also need to import log. And um, so basically, if, if anything goes wrong, this fatal LN will allow our program to exit properly and it'll also print an error message out for us. So that's, uh, you know, useful. We could also do this, something like this, server, server, comma, er equal HTTP dot listen and serve, yada, 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 and then handle our errors, but the log out fatal LN will work just fine. So if I run go run main dot go, starting our HTTP server, I come over to localhost port 3000, we have hello world. So we see that we printed that out. Our IO package wrote that string to the web page, and we'll go over how to handle HTML and CSS and stuff like that in the future. But if we want to come over to foo, oops, slash foo, I went to foos because I used that as a previous thing. Oh, we should probably make this a different message. So you're at the foo page. And then to exit out of this, we'll just press control C. We'll make sure I save this in Atom and we'll run go run main.go. Starting our HTTP server. Now if we go to the foo page, you're at the foo page. Success. So as you can see from the terminal, we're not really getting any input as far as, you know, who's accessing what on our web page. And that's not really good. We want to add logging to our web page. So, you know, we can A, get analytics from our users. We can see what pages are popular, blah, 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 but also for security purposes. So in the next episode of this series, we're going to build a logger for our HTTP server. And... If you want to try this on your own, it just involves printing out some of the fields from the HTTP.request uh, method. But anyway, thank you for watching Corey's Corner. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I love you.